Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture with a thought process from Albert Einstein. He says, try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. Of course, in today's world, people do not look at his statement, but which is eternal. So, uh, in the last lecture, basically, we looked at the suit mechanism of the jet diffusion flame and also the diffusion flame general. And uh, later on we moved into the initiation of discussion on the liquid fuel combustion, right. And we will continue that uh, discussion on that. And uh, let me just tell you that uh, we need to basically convert the bulk liquid into spray. In other words, arrays of spray is basically arrays of uh, droplet size of various kind and um, such that it will be helpful for the uh, higher rate of combustion. Why? I will just give an example. 3 mm diameter of droplet, right? Uh, if I want to convert into, of course, uh, hypothetically 30 micron, what will be the 30 micron diameter, like let us say there is a big droplet 3 mm, I will convert it in 30 micron and it will be like something 1 million, right. And the if you look at the surface area will be increased by tremendously. So, therefore, I can enhance the heat release rate per unit volume for the same amount of fuel being burnt or for burning the same amount of fuel. So, that is the beauty of this thing, but however, it is quite complex in nature and uh, not only atomization, but also the combustion process involved. I will just try to give you overall picture of a the liquid uh, oxygen and gaseous hydrogen combustion in a rocket engine. This is a very simplified one. If you look at this, I have shown here and it is having a liquid oxygen uh, jet, which is a liquid itself. This is the liquid, right? Liquid oxygen. And uh, this is remaining intact. However, when the hydrogen is moving around, it is trying to uh, smear out the some of the larger ligaments. These are ligaments, you know, which will be coming out of that. And then this of course, will be interacting with the gaseous hydrogen and the other things, they may collide each other, then the, uh, they will be subjected to uh, decrease in their diameter. And this keep in mind that these are not spherical in shape ligaments, may be, may not be, but generally no. This entanglement of ligament from the bulk liquid is known as a primary atomization. And later on, these ligaments will be converted into droplets and then it will be interacting with the cell. Sometimes the droplet may collapse, but not uh, near this place, but may be far away, momentum will be very much reduced, not there, they may collapse also. That means, small droplet can, uh, you know, combine uh, two small droplets or many droplets will combine to bigger droplets. See, that will occur only when the momentum uh, in the this thing is not there and combustion has not taken place. So, uh, this is if you look at it is a quite uh, complex process. Uh, let me just start with the liquid injection. Injection is a, still a problem, the gas injection another problem. One has to of course, the if there is a flame, if you look at this a flame is here, of course, it will have to ignite and then there will be some gasification, vaporization of the like front, these are the vaporizing front, right, I have shown. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the liquid will be heated up and then uh, the atomization there can be a jet or there may be seed formation. Of course, here is not being shown, uh, but there is a fan also depending on the type of injectors, what I am not discussing about type of injector that will be 
another altogether very uh, different subject. So, secondary atom I have told coalesces and collision can occur right in this case and there will be a vaporization, a droplet vaporization, gasification, some flame will be formed, I will be showing something how it will be going on. And beside this there will be turbulent mixing, chemical kinetics like which will be governing the reaction rate, turbulence and uh, droplet interaction and turbulence and reaction interactions you know all those things will be coming to picture in the actual systems. Beside this the, as there will be heat release there will be expansion of the gases and of course, the flow may separate because we want to enhance the mixing in the real system then there will be flow separations and uh, all those things has to be modeled and understood it is not that easy it is quite complex process. So, I have just given you the bird's eye view of the liquid fuel combustion unlike gaseous fuel combustion liquid fuel combustion is quite involved to understand and to model right and it is a two phase flow. So, uh, turbulent and then uh, you know heat transfer, mass transfer, chemical kinetics, it is quite complex and also the, uh, the droplet size uh, the distribution will be changing right how will take and all are random in nature keep in mind the droplet the atomization process is random in nature. So, I uh, will just give you some idea about that is let us say this is a atomizer right and a jet is coming through this nozzle right this is your nozzle and there is a atomization is taking place there might be droplet dis dispersion right and uh, there might be a droplet interaction the droplet will be interacting with each other there will be evaporation and this is of course, the envelope flame I have shown here kind of things. If you look at there might be a situation where there is a several of droplets and they are very close each other right and they may together will be uh, giving some vaporization of the this thing and then oxidizer will be coming over here oxidizer right and this is coming uh, fuel vapor and this is a flame will be formed right and this is known as a group combustion or group flame. There might be a situation where a single droplet flame might be there right and there might be situation two you know droplets burning droplet having flame together a little far away. So, there is a all permutation combination one can occur of course, this I have shown a flame in my lab itself the liquid fuel combustion you can see this is again a jet uh, liquid fuel combustor, uh, combustion uh, uh, that is a, this is a blue color it is well mixed and here of course, the droplets are and these are the path line where the droplet will be moving you know that shows it is not a very good image however, if it is a high speed image you can get track the droplet provided it is a bigger one if it is small it will be very difficult to track exactly right and bigger one you need not to you should not have that you know <laughs> right. So, uh, let us look at what will be happening. Happening is that uh, there is a one situation is a single isolated droplet right one single droplet this is your droplet right of course, generally it will be spherical nature right and uh, there might be uh, as I told that there will be evaporation from the surface of the droplet right this is uh, vapor fuel vapor and this will be oxidizer which will be coming and then this is the flame which is formed right. And there might be two droplet which are together having one flame there might be some may be five burning droplets which are together right. And uh, of course, if there is a uh, great number then they call it a cluster or a cloud of the droplets and this is known as a group combustion. Generally, uh, in the homogeneity, the spray field with respect to density, drop, size, and velocity, you know, it is very difficult to get, right? And uh, droplet bulk burns in a collective manner, referred to as a group combustion. You can say this as a basically group combustion. Uh, you can also call this as a five, but uh, generally two burning droplet, three burning droplet is very real you know like it will be when it will be occurring where the number density that means number of droplets per unit volume is very high 
that means they are very close to each other although i have magnified its own but they are very close to each other each droplets so therefore the groove combustion will be taking place and it can all permutation combination can take place like it can have a fuel droplet single fuel, uh, isolated droplet combustion two burning droplets and five burning maybe seven nine uh, you know eight six whatever it may be it may be also together so anything can happen and uh, and all together so let us look at what is happening the process of droplet combustion once this uh, fuel droplet is there what you need to have is basically heat from the flame surface right if there is a droplet here right there should be some ignition source you have to give so that the heat will be coming out right it will be getting into this droplet like let us say this is the heat source heat source you know heat source so some heat has to get into why it is required because it has to evaporate right it has to vaporize the liquid droplet right and uh, then uh, fuel of course will be start uh, boiling means vaporizing rather and uh, there will be vaporization which will be occurring right and uh, this uh, vapor vapor you know fuel vapors will be moving of course this will be moving towards all the sides right and similarly this is a quiescent atmosphere so therefore oxidizer will be coming towards that also and whenever they will meet right so uh, some kind of this flame i can say this is your flame will be formed so uh, and fuel and oxidizer will be mixing at the surface of the flame that means in this case the uh, and this is uh, occurring because of diffusions and this is diffusion control and the reaction will be very fast right as compared to the time required for mixing and then of course you have to ignite and if there is a flame already there is no ignition the flame will be giving you heat into the surface this is heat heat will be getting into the surface of the droplet and it will evaporating it you know so the droplet will be getting evaporated due to the heat received from the flame once the flame is established so <coughs> what we will be doing we will be basically uh, looking at a single droplet combustion in our class because it is very difficult to uh, tackle the problems of the spray combustion later on we will be using this how we uh, will be using those uh, results for uh, analyzing the spray combustion again within the limitation of one dimensional flow right so let us uh, look at uh, the single isolated droplet and in uh, first is the situation where droplet is there this is your droplet having certain diameter fuel vapor is going out and then this is a quiescent atmosphere therefore oxidizer will be coming in right from atmosphere right now i will get a flame like this right and there is another situation where the droplet this is a droplet and i am getting a flame like that so i have shown you earlier a flame in my lab itself but under what condition i should get this is will be corresponding to the zero gravity condition gravity condition right and this is uh, earth gravity condition of course uh, one can conduct experiment also the higher g as well okay and uh, keep in mind that uh, generally the this will be a problem which is complex as compared to the zero gravity condition isn't it because here the flame is symmetric in nature whereas here also it is symmetric but it is symmetric with what will be along with this not with this right along the vertical direction in this diagram but not in horizontal right and beside this the uh, this elongated flame 
is coming because of buoyancy. Now, buoyancy effect has to be also taken care. And there is another uh, situation which is a practical one that where the flow will be there, right? Or I can say this is oxidizer velocity, which which is moving, and then I'll get a flame here, and this is your wake region, right? And this is your boundary of the flame. There will be boundary layer, hydrodynamic, and also thermal, right? So uh, this will be there, and this is also a quite a complex in nature. What we will be doing, we will be basically uh, trying to look at the droplet burning uh, under the zero gravity condition, try to analyze it and use the data for the convective flow, because this is basically force convection, right? Condition and this is natural convection, right? condition and this is the zero gravity there will be some convection but however it is uh, some bulk fluid will be moving but that will be radial it is going on so this is known as normal g uh, what you call zero g right this is zero g and uh, keep in mind that this distance if i take from the center or maybe i can take from center here so, this distance, what I call this is the flame standoff distance, R f is the flame standoff distance. Uh, uh, if you look at that is very uh, important and that will affect uh, basically the how fast the droplet will be receding, means getting consumed, right. So, uh, what are the factors that affect the shape of the flame front? This basically as we have already discussed condition under which combustion takes place for the 0 g this will be spherical flame front no buoyancy effect this is a spherical and symmetric also normal gravity is elongated due to natural convection and force con convection condition flame align with the flow because this is the flow which is taking place it is aligned. And energy required to uh, vaporize this liquid fuel is a very important because that will be governing how much you know fuel is vaporized and how it is moving out and then coming in contact with the uh, oxidizer for forming a flame. So, Q B is equal to delta H V plus C L T S minus T infinity. If you look at the first term is basically latent heat of vaporization and the second term is the sensible enthalpy and T s is the what the surface temperature droplet or surf, surface temperature and T infinity is the ambient temperature. If you look at the let us say uh, of course, here it will be very high, but uh, you will have to look at when you started what will be the ambient. Like for example, far away from here this will be T infinity, very far away from the droplet. Nearby it will be it will be flame temperature, right. Uh, near the flame, uh, flame temperature after that it will be receding. So, we will be analyzing this thing and uh, for that uh, what we will say let us look at a single droplet, we are considering the uh, 0 g condition force convection condition if you look at any practical combustor will be force con convection, because the flow will be coming and the droplet will be there and then it will be right. But single droplet certainly no, you will have to conduct an experiment to understand the process. The array of droplet will be there and it will be moving and each may be droplet will be uh, moving with their own velocities, but uh, also the velocity will be changing across the uh, cross section of the combustors and as it moves it will also change it is quite complex. Generally force convection means is a practical situation and this single droplet what we are discussing do you think that uh, it will be anywhere practical no right it is only for our understanding or in experiment for research purposes we do. So, uh, if you look at the droplet 
is here and this is a symmetric in the sense along the uh, phi direction because it is spherical in nature droplet and uh, the phi direction and then uh, the psi direction that will be symmetric and it will be varying only along the r direction right. So, uh, if you look at this distance is basically from here to this, this is the R s, R s is the droplet uh, surface radius right. This is basically uh, I can say R s is the droplet surface right and uh, this is your as I told R f is your flame stand up stand up distance because flame will be uh, located at certain region that will be dictated by basically how fast this uh, uh, fuel is diffusing into the flames and also the oxidizer being diffused and mixed. So, that will be dictated by that and uh, if you look at the region wise and there will be uh, inner region right in this portion this is your inner region. region right and outer region will be here I mean like outer region. So, in here re region what will be happening if you look at temperature of course, uh, from the uh, surface temperature this is your surface temperature right this will be surface temperature T s and it will be increasing to the flame temperature and then after that it will be decreasing and this will be something T infinity right ambient condition. And uh, similarly, uh, if you look at the fuel mass fraction is uh, decreasing, it will be maximum at the flame surface sorry and the droplet surface and it will goes on decreasing, uh, decreasing and then it becomes 0 at this location. And similarly, the oxidizer also will be uh, mass fraction of the oxidizer will be decreasing and it became 0 as the uh, flame surface and this is the flame sheet and product of course, will have peak value at the flame surface because product is formed and keep in mind that this is the approximation what we are doing thin flame approximation. So, uh, if you look at this is basically the uh, single droplet in a quiescent atmosphere there is no you know disturbance there is no flow it is just uh, you know uh, quiescent atmosphere. So, uh, if it is quiescent atmosphere then and also it is under 0 g condition right. And I can as I told uh, earlier that it is a, we can consider it as a one dimensional inviscid flow right, there is no viscous effect we are considering. And the we can assume that uh, quasi steady state droplet vaporization or the burning is taking place. Keep in mind that this vapor which will be moving right that depends upon whether it is uh, steady state or not because of fact that what is happening the rho f of the fuel density of the fuel right will be far greater than the rho of the vapor right or the gas whatever it being you know this gas uh, the fuel uh, get, gets vaporized on the surface of the droplet and then it moves right. So, that density is very very higher. So, if it is higher, so what you can say that d r s right I can write down d r s by d t will be very very small right as compared to the velocity the bulk velocity which which it will be gas will be moving because the gas will be moving outwardly right with certain velocity because it is you know due to the diffusion right which will be taking place and also right. So, therefore, uh, this uh, will be quasi steady state this is not changing you know it will be something uh, few mm or a, uh, not mm even it will be micron per second. So, it is almost you know changing, but whereas the this velocity will be higher order. So, therefore, it will be almost steady quasi steady we cannot say it is a steady process because the droplet size is decreasing as the burning is taking place ok. That decrease of the droplet size is quite small with respect to uh, time 
and as compared to the with which velocity will be moving ok. So, uh, the droplet temperature is uniform, but which is not true right, because at the center temperature will be different at the surface it will be different, but we are assuming otherwise you will have to solve the equation for the liquid or the droplet inside that you will have to solve, but we are assuming it to be the uniform, which is not the case even if you conduct experiment it is not possible ok. But however, simplicity we have done and density of liquid fuel much higher than the gas phase I have already told fuel is a single component with no solubility of gases because let us say diesel, diesel is a multi component fuel right. So, there might be multi components fuel like nowadays people are using gasoline they are adding some alcohol. So, then it is not that way it is only single component fuel there is no other solu um, uh, gases which are being uh, there in that and otherwise there will be a lot of problems in that like uh, vortex will be formed there is a quite complex phenomenon. And flow velocities are assumed to be low right and single step irreversible reaction rate uh, uh, we will be using which is basically as I have told this is the thin flame approximation uh, this is the thin flame uh, or you can say this is a thin flame. right approximation we will be doing and constant thermophysical properties as usual we do uh, unity Lewis number right and uh, the radiation heat transfer is neglected. So, these are the things we are making this assumption and uh, no other phase is formed in the liquid fuel droplet right so, because in the droplet there might be uh, two phase thing there might be solid particle or some other things. So, that is not there. So, with this we will uh, stop over and we will be discussing in the next lecture how to carry out this analysis ok. Thank you very much.